The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Ah, yes, welcome back to another episode of The Commercial Break! I am Brian Green. This is the director of Metaverse Services, Kristen Hoadley, and my dear friend. How in the hell are you, Brian? Best to you, Chris. Best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. I thought I'd go back to the old... I like it. Just for a show. Just for an episode. Yeah, just switch it out. All right, if you're missing it, here it is. <laughs> there you go. Welcome back to Yo. another episode of this, The Commercial Break, the only commercial break you will ever need, guaranteed, or your money back. 30 day, gar- 30 day money back guarantee on The Commercial Break. That's right. Plenty of you, I'm sure, are opting for that. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we got this YouTube channel, right? Yes. It's getting a little momentum. It's not, you know, th- listen, we're not big. We're, <laughs> we're not no YouTubers. shit about us. <laughs> no, now we're not YouTube. We're barely podcasters, Chrissy. Yes. Okay. So we get this <laughs> months ago. We did this stupid, silly thing about that stripper movie starring Elizabeth Berkley, Showgirls. Oh, yeah, yeah, Showgirls. Okay. Yep. So some person, some person who's got obviously a sty in their eye, decided they would write this comment that basically was like, obviously you have never seen this movie. Elizabeth Berkeley was just doing what the director told her to do. Next time you decide to review a classic film. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a cult classic now. It is a cult classic. Yeah. By the way, I've seen because it it's so a bad. million times. It's so bad it's good. Yeah. You can't watch it. Elizabeth Berkeley looks great in the movie. She is a horrible actress. But she looks great in the movie. It's it's too funny to ignore. If it comes on, I watch it. Yeah. But then she says, next time you decide to review a movie, maybe you should watch it first. Oh. Thanks. The <laughs> funny part is, you thought that was a movie review. <laughs> I I mean, come on, this is a stupid fucking show. How many times do I have to disclaim this? This uh. is a stupid fucking show. No one cares. There's no facts in this show. We don't tell the truth. No. We're not interested in the truth. I am not... Uh, We're not fact-checking. Yeah, I'm not MSNBC, <laughs> Fox News here. I'm not fact I don't have a whole department of people fact-checking. <laughs> I just have fun. Whatever I can remember, and this little pea brain of mine comes out on the microphone. And if you don't care for it, so hit the subscribe button, but then don't watch <laughs> yes. any more of the videos. <laughs> I just need your subscription. I want to go from 17 to 18 subscribers on that YouTube before the year is out. That's right. So thank you very much for that. (laughs) Story time with Brian. Story time. Story time time with Brian. I should get like a little music. We do need a little bit. Story time with Brian. (laughs) Here comes the bullshit out of Brian's mouth. (laughs) When I was a, a young, ripe teenager, I had a friend. Let's call him Eduardo. Eduardo turned me on to... Hunter S. Thompson. Oh yeah. When I I guess I was like sixteen or seventeen years old. And I hadn't I had no knowledge of Hunter S. Thompson until this guy moved into town from where he was from, I think Texas. And he handed me a copy of Fear and Loathing in Las mm, Vegas. Classic. And he said, you have to read this book. If you haven't read it, you have to read this book. I said, I haven't read it. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. This huge book, Hunt, you know, Fear and Loathing. Yeah. And I started to read it, and, and I was hooked immediately. Blown away. Blown away oh, yeah. at the sheer, like, audacity of this book and the in the style in which it was written. For those of you that don't know, Hunter S. Thompson was a very famous author, a uh, counterculture author, who started a type of journalism called Gonzo Journalism. Mm-hmm. He worked well, for Rolling Stone. He for worked for Rolling Stone. He worked for Sports Illustrated. He worked for a lot of places. Most of the places fired him after a hot minute because he was too fucking <laughs> high wild. to do his job. He was wild. Is not. He is the definition <laughs> yes. of debauchery. Like he, I think he once said, let me see if I get this. This is not. Word for word. Please don't write on the fucking YouTube page about this, you dumb shit. Uh, This is not word for word. But he said, I hate to advise anyone that taking drugs, being violent, general debauchery, and drunkenness is a good idea, but it's worked for me. It did (laughs) work for him. It did work for him. Yeah. He was a drug addict. He was an enthusiast of narcotics. And guns. He was an alcoholic. He (laughs) he loved guns. Cannons. He bought cannons. The guy had cannons on his ranch. And he shot them at people a lot of times. He just, (laughs) I think he shot his first wife. Like, didn't he shoot his first wife? Yeah. And then claimed it was, you know, they were playing a game. He was trying to shoot the (laughs) apple off her head or something. Some shit like that. But, I mean, if you saw Hunter S. Thompson, you would not let this guy shoot an apple off your head. He was just like a crotchety old drunk who smoked his cigarettes in one of those old lady extenders. Yes. He had the cigarette uh-huh. extender, right? <laughs> the he wild was, glasses. Yeah, he was, his affectation, everything, he was so 
nuanced yet absolutely in your face. It was unbelievable. And I loved yeah. everything about the mythology mm-hmm. of Hunter That's S. Thompson. That's fascinating. Died in 2005. And to my knowledge, there's only been two movies that have been made about about Hunter S. Thompson. I want to say this. Gonzo journalism is basically rather than tell the story in a third person, like almost every other journalist does, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, The man was shot on the street. Witnesses say he would put himself in the middle of the story. He would become the story. Uh And why it was Gonzo journalism is because it was no longer about whatever he was sent to write about. It was about his (laughs) His experience, his experience trying to figure out what went on. So fear and loathing became about two trips to Las Vegas with his attorney, who he referred to as my attorney for the entire (laughs) story of the book. Was it Benicio Del Toro that played? He played him in in one of the two movies. It's Fear and Loathing. Fear and Loathing. And then I think the other one was Bill Murray did did also did the Fear and Loathing version. But that was like, it was like a script written kind of around Fear and Loathing. But word for word, explicit version, Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. It's a classic movie. It is so (laughs) fucked up. But it's everything that you would imagine if you had read the book. Let me give you one. Let me give you. I pictured him crawling on the floor I, of the casino, right? Just like, yeah. yeah. He was like drinking. Taking quaaludes. And taking quaaludes. Yeah. My friend and I, then this is the same guy that I lived in the back porch with. Oh, right. So for those of you that haven't heard this episode, <laughs> at some point in my homelessness, basically <laughs> traveling around, working at restaurants, trying to find a place to sleep. We moved in with one of Eduardo's friends. The guy had a two-bedroom apartment. There were already two people and a, his girlfriend living there. <laughs> so you lived on the but porch. he had a screened-in back porch, <laughs> probably the size of this table. I mean, it was tiny. No heat, no air conditioning, no, no cover from the rain. If the rain was moving just a little bit sideways, <laughs> everything was getting wet. But Eduardo set it up as a bedroom. He put his bed against the wall (laughs) with sheets and covers and everything. He had a record player out there, all this, all these (laughs) knickknacks. He was trying to live the gonzo lifestyle. life. And I was following him (laughs) down that road, right? I was just Wait for me. Wait for me. (laughs) Wait, quaaludes? Wait for me. (laughs) A sheet of acid? I'll take one too. (laughs) I mean, and at night when this guy... Uh, the guy who owned, had rented the apartment when he yeah. was at work, he was like a ma- manager of a restaurant. He didn't get home till two or three in the morning. Yeah, that's the life. He had this big whiteboard in the kit in the dining room, which was right out. You know, you you the screened in porch was right <laughs> next to the dining room. Uh-huh. His big whiteboard on the wall. For what reason, I have no idea. But David and I coming up with ideas would just get as <laughs> fucked up as we could possibly get and just write down ideas about how we're going to change the world. Music lyrics. Oh, yeah. Our next album is going to be. We're going to start this company. <laughs> going to change the world. We were just so stupid. I mean, we were just a- absolute debauchery is all I got to say. So Jerry Garcia had died a couple of years previous. And the big announcement comes out that, that the rest of the band was now going to tour under the name the dead. Mm-hmm. And they were going to put together something that was going to tour around called the further fest. That's right. Right. Remember that? Okay. Remember the further that. fest. It's a big deal. Everyone was excited about yeah. it. If you were running in certain circles, I mean, you had to have your head in a hole not to know that the further fest was coming to your town and it was sure to be just a shit show from beginning to end. It was a whole day festival from like 10 in the morning to like 12 at night, band after band after band. Shake down street. Shake down street. <laughs> <laughs> whole nine yards. <laughs> so... David and I were in the middle of idolizing Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas when we heard the Further Fest was going to come into town. Let me give you one sentence (laughs) of Fear and Loathing. I just want to, I want to get this word for word. Two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, and a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers. (laughs) Oh yeah. And a quart of tequila, a quart of rum and a case of Budweiser. Two pints of raw ether and a dozen amyls. Amyls are fucking like He was not killers. worried about a headache yeah, that, next no. day. He, <laughs> that, that's what Hunter S. Thompson drove to Las Vegas with in yeah. his cars. David and I decided we were going to try and collect <laughs> as many of these things into... Try get close as possible. Yeah, a box we called the further box. <laughs> we were going to save all this stuff for this one event. The further fest. Okay. Right? So David and I were were, were going to do it right. 
we weren't going to let anybody get in our way of having a good time that day. And we started to collect this every you know, here and there. We'd pick up this, we'd pick up right. that, and we put it in this box called the further <laughs> box that would sit out in this open screen to four. Uh, and the day, and then we got a day off before and two days off afterwards. Good work. thing, it was like clearing five Good days schedule. Yeah. We knew, right? Yes, we knew yes. we're going to be in no condition <laughs> to do anything resembling responsibility. Plus, you could possibly still be up for you know four days. Yeah, that was the thing is that I think we knew <laughs> that sleep was not going to come. Uh-uh. We knew it was going to be a hot mess, yeah. right? And and we knew that it was probably going to be something we would have to suffer through, like you know. <laughs> That many narcotics, unless you're Hunter S. Thompson, you're not like having fun after a minute. No. It's just you're doing it for the sake of doing it, (laughs) hoping that the next thing you take or thing you do is going to bring you to a new level of wonderfulness. But it usually just gets you more paranoid, more upset, more stressed out, less sleep, (laughs) more hung, you know, the whole nine yards. So we collect this box that's nowhere near as cool as Hunter S. Thompson's thing because half of those stuff is, you know, is illegal and you can't find it anyway. But Well, let's just say we have a nice collection. Okay. All right. Get day, your box. Bef- day before Further Fest c- comes, we have a day, the day off, and our whole intention is we get a case of beer, and we're like, and we have our guitars. We're like, okay, let's guitars. let's do our let's sing a couple songs, let's drink a couple beers, let's get some sleep, let's mm-hmm. wake up first thing tomorrow, eight o'clock or seven o'clock when the sun comes up, we're up and we get going. <laughs> you would know because you're on the porch. That's right. You couldn't <laughs> you couldn't sleep at six thirty in the morning. <laughs> because the bird, you know, chirp, 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 chirp. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or it would be raining or cold or hot or whatever. And it was the middle of the summer, I think, when this further fest came. That sounds right. I would like, so <laughs> let's say at like, you know, noon, we'd crack a beer. It wasn't even 2 p.m. before that box was broken I was open gonna say, and all over yeah. the place. And we were halfway <laughs> through it by 9 p.m. <laughs> I mean, we were just so <laughs> torn up. Yeah. By the time Further Fest rolled around, the box was dry. There was nothing oh in there. God. Not a fucking thing. <laughs> and it was also like 2 p.m. So we had blew missed. The, we blew our water. We <laughs> were like little children. <laughs> you know, it's like my son. You can have two gummy bears later or one gummy bear now, mm-hmm. right? They'll take the one gummy bear now all day long. <laughs> we go to the festival at 2 p.m. We man- when Somebody picks us up. We get a ride. We go to the festival and we are just sideways. Sideways and really hurting. I mean, yeah. like really hurting. No sleep. Hot sun. Yeah, hot sun just baking on you. We're on yeah. the lawn. We don't all have right. There's no air conditioning in sight, no. you know. And we find a place on the lawn and we're basically just frozen there. Right. Right? Like we're not moving to go. We found anywhere. your spot. We found our spot. And you were staying yeah. there. And we were going to stay uh-huh. there, protected, shielded yes. from <laughs> prying eyes and police officers and you know, helicopters <laughs> and everything, right? I don't even remember who played. I don't even remember what the music was. But eventually I drank a couple more beers and I got in the groove. So like by 4 or 5 p.m. I found some friends. By 4 or 5 p.m. I was like, okay, you know, I'm not, I'm hurting, but I'll make the best of it. I'll make it through. Let's dance right yeah eduardo decides he's going to lay down in the grass and you know he just laid down in the grass so i we, everyone was just too fucked to even communicate to each other so i just kind of danced <laughs> off and i was like i'll find him eventually there's no cell phones at this time no midnight rolls around you know everybody is uh singing on their way out the door no our love will not fade away dun, 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 dun. right the whole song yes. everyone's just you know it's the best thing that's ever happened and i realized I have no idea where Eduardo. I haven't seen him in tw- in like eight hours, right. right? Since I left him at four o'clock, so I start freaking out. Yeah, I don't even know where he is. I hope he gets home. I don't know, but I decide that I'm going to wait it out. I'm just going to let everyone leave, and maybe he'll find me. I'll stand right here near the door, and maybe everyone will find me. Well, everyone left. I'm talking. There's like 20 people left in the right. venue, and I'm like, oh shit! I you didn't see him, and there he is. I look over into the lawn and there he is in the exact same, same position same. that he was eight <laughs> hours ago. He is laying in the grass, sunglasses on, hat tipped over, his head, <laughs> beer in his hand. Same beer that I bought him at the beginning. He's just sitting there. He's and I'm frozen. like, oh, Eduardo. Yeah. I run over and I'm like, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> are, you like, are you alive? Are you alive? And then all of a sudden his hand like lifts up and he rips off his sunglasses and he's like, what happened? And I was like, "Uh, did you, are you sleeping? He's like, no, dude, 
I took it further. <laughs> I was like, you certainly did, bro. <laughs> did you hear any of the music? He's like, I don't even, I don't I know where so. I went for the last eight hours. <laughs> Just hanging out. He went in. He didn't even know what day it was. <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson was the coolest thing to us, unfortunately. Unfortunately for the yeah. rest of the world, no one has a constitution <laughs> like Hunter S. Thompson. This is true. With the notable exception and now being proven in a court of law. Johnny fucking Depp. Really? 21 Jump Street Johnny fucking right. Depp. The guy who was busting everybody for their bags of weed and grass is now probably the world's most <laughs> recognizable drug abuser. Mm -hmm. And not in the way like, oh my God, like, you know, it's intervention. Going on? Do you know what an addict's worst enemy is? Time and money. Those two things. If you have time on your hands and you have money in your pocket it doesn't drugs true drugs don't aren't a problem yeah you want to know why right because you can keep affording them exactly. and no one's asking you to do anything right true johnny depp will never ask for another penny in his life he will never need another penny in his life the mm -hmm. guy has hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. he is he was good friends with hunter s thompson and he picked up the torch right where Hunter left off. Did when he? John, when Hunter S. Thompson committed suicide, Johnny Depp paid over a million and a half dollars to get a cannon. That's right. That would shoot his ashes over the Rio Grande River. Yep. <laughs> and when Johnny shot those ashes out of that cannon, <laughs> I think he shot them right back into his mouth and absorbed Hunter S. Thompson's yep. drug constitution. <laughs> this trial that is going on right now, for those of you that don't know, Amber Heard, his ex-wife. Yes. Wrote an op-ed in 2015, I think it was. Wrote an op-ed explaining that Johnny Depp was abusing her, like physically, well, she didn't mentally. Name him. Okay, she didn't Fair name enough. him, but she said in Pat in a past relationship, that's what had happened, and so she she dragged everybody him. took right. took that to mean it was Johnny. Everyone drew their conclusions. He yeah. lost Jack Sparrow. No one wants to work with him. It really became a huge problem for Johnny Depp's career. But if the allegations were true, it's it, that's no laughing matter either. Like, right. You can't run around, you know, smacking your loved one no. in any situation, girl, boy, whatever. Mm -hmm. But Johnny Depp has a story of his own to tell, which is Amber Heard was the abuser in the relationship. And I was. I read a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah. So. That's he said, she said, basically. Yes. Sounds like it was a big fucking hot mess it from the does. beginning. It sounds yeah. like there was a lot of abuse going on on both, both sides, sides, but it sounds also like this is just a drug filled party that yeah. went on a little bit too long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ever been to those parties where like everyone's <laughs> yes. getting fucking twisted and then at one point in the night it turns sour, right. like the whole vibe turns nasty, <laughs> yes. you know? People start like hiding their bags of cocaine <laughs> and going in the bathroom in little groups and <laughs> no one wants, you know? It's like, I thought yeah. we were all hanging out together. Yeah. No, no, no. They went to the bathroom. They've been in there for three hours. <laughs> They're hoarding the blow, man. <laughs> Johnny Depp decides, I this case, a $100 million defamation suit against Amber Heard for this op-ed that he put mm -hmm. out, she put out, is not about winning or losing because Johnny Depp will never get $100 million out of Amber Heard. She doesn't have that kind of money, nor is he likely to win the case because she never named him by name. Yeah. And it's very hard to prove defamation in any situation, mm -hmm. let alone when you're famous. It's just a different set of circumstances when all your whole life is an open book. It's just a right, very public eye. Yeah, it's just a very different circumstances yeah. than if you were to write an op-ed about me mm -hmm. and, you know, damage my podcasting <laughs> career. Oh my God. You could just go back to whatever episode <laughs> yeah, and yeah, just be you've like, done that. hey, he told it. <laughs> I didn't say it. He did. <laughs> So he has this $100 million defamation suit yeah. over the last two weeks, uh, as we're recording this over the last two weeks. Johnny Depp knows all of this information is going to come out. He knows that there are pictures and videos of his drug abuse, of, of things that he's said, of all kind of stuff. He knows and he's prepared because he gets up on the stand and and essentially gets cross-examined. Yeah live on television in front of millions and millions of people streaming it on the internet and everything. Johnny Depp doesn't care if he wins or loses. This is about making him a likable guy again so he can get uh, more movie roles. He's trying to rehab his image mm -hmm. in a court of law. This is my opinion, and I've heard other people say this, like actual attorneys, which I'm not. Uh, you just play one, on the, play one on the podcast. <laughs> I'm also, you know, Gene Siskel apparently too. Uh, so Johnny Depp has been doing this performative dance on the stand for like four days now. 
and this attorney, this this attorney, first of all, it has no idea who he's dealing with. Johnny Depp <laughs> is the world, one of the world's best actors. <laughs> yeah, he is. And he is funny. Like, he is naturally funny. He's a stumbly, mumbly kind of guy, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't care what this guy asks. He's answering it with all honesty. And what has come out is that Johnny Depp is a world class drug abuser. Really? I mean, he is just. I didn't quite know the extent. I mean, I figured, but not to this extent. He doesn't. He's like Hunter S. Thompson. He doesn't care. This is rubbed off. Like, you or me, we would not write our doctor and ask for cocaine or ecstasy. Right. Johnny Depp writes emails to his doctor asking for (laughs) cocaine or ecstasy because. (laughs) they give it to him? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But he doesn't care. He's putting in text messages. He's telling people. Yeah. He's writing around. He's carrying around a box full of blow. He's, you know, acid pills. Him and uh, Marilyn Manson are just having a grand old time. Jeez. I have taken some. I, I think what we'll do is over the next couple of days or weeks, we'll play more and more okay. clips because there's just too much and it's just too good. Okay. I did the audio version <laughs> instead of the video version because... Um, quite frankly, I don't have the time to go through 16 hours of testimony court te- testimony, yeah. but I cut up a couple clips. Snippets. Would you like to hear? Yes. Okay. <laughs> let's, I'll just let you listen to, let's do a drugs one first. I'll just let you listen okay. to this and you tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. This is about <laughs> drugs. Johnny Depp talking about drugs. drugs. Not saying there is, but you were asking for more cocaine and you were asking for more ecstasy, correct? I wasn't asking for more ecstasy. I was asking for ecstasy because that was what I was requested from, was requested by Miss Hurt. And um, one of one of your good friends that you've taken drugs with before is Marilyn Manson, right? Um. Yes, we've taken. Uh, 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 we've drank together. Uh, we've we've uh, we've had cocaine together maybe a couple of times couple of times um pills right listen to this with marilyn manson um i once gave uh marilyn manson a pill uh so that he would stop talking so much (laughs) I just imagine it. <laughs> Marilyn Manson. Here, take this. Marilyn <laughs> Manson, you gotta shut up, man. Yeah. I just imagine a long day <laughs> or night or several of like cocaine abuse. Yeah. And, just and talking Marilyn's and talking just and talking yapping talking. away <laughs> about his new album or whatever. And Johnny's like, I can't take it anymore, man. You gotta yeah. shut up, Marilyn. You gotta shut up. Take, this. Yeah, take four Viking and call me in the morning. <laughs> take six Xanax. He stops talking. He admits to yeah. drugging his friends, so he stops talking. <laughs> this is a riot. What's I'd love one day at this house. One oh, day yeah, at Johnny Depp's fun. house. He should if he needs money, he should just sell a day with Johnny Depp. True, and it's a whole experience. I would buy you know, people are paying fifty million dollars to go to the ISS station, the yes. International Space Station. Yeah. I would forget ha- that. I would happily Johnny Depp. Yeah, a week with Johnny Depp. I'd need I'd want like I'd certainly want protective gear. That's yes. what I'd want. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I don't do drugs now. So, but you know, I just want to be a part of the action. I yeah. just want to put myself into the middle <laughs> of the action. You want more? Yes, All right, please. Here we go. Here's uh, something about a picture. Mr. Depp, do you recognize this picture as being? By the way, he's very mumbly and stumbly. So there's long pauses in between this mm. stuff, and I'm sorry, but I thought I'd leave it for first of all for posterity's sake, but second for affectation. Okay. It's important, I think, you understand how Johnny Depp is on the stand. Like he's <laughs> he doesn't have a care in the fucking world. I'm I'm I'm. I'm almost convinced that he's high right now. I was going to say. He wears sunglasses like some, some days. Right then. Yeah, of course he is. A picture of you. Yes, Miss Hurd kindly showed it to me the day after she took it. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> kindly. Kindly. <laughs> this picture. This is a picture of you on a, on a black leather couch, passed out, correct? Passed out is an interesting way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I call it fucked up. <laughs> but not bad. I call it high on fentanyl. Not agree. But yeah, not agree. <laughs> you say, Your Honor. Well, I passed out. I'm fucked up. I don't want people thinking I'm a. I don't want people. I don't want people thinking I'm a lightweight. Be asleep. Where is it? What what residence? That's in Boston. I'm sorry. That was in Boston. Boston. When I was doing black mass in Boston. And that's um, that's ice cream on your lap, correct? 
It is indeed. Uh, okay. Ms. Hurd asked me to hold the ice cream as she noticed that I was on, on the nod. That means falling asleep. That means falling asleep while high on opiates. Know, That's what right? it's called, yeah. on the nod. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, just out. to let you know, it's a picture of Johnny Depp, and he's got a, like a milkshake, <laughs> a chocolate milkshake, and it is he's like passed out on the couch with his head, you know, on the back of the couch, yeah. you know, like moved over the back of the couch, and the milkshake is just all over the bottom half of him. Oh, like no. just he obviously was holding spilled. it and it spilled. Yeah. Um, from the seventeen-hour day that I'd worked, and right. also the opiates that I'd ingested. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you'll notice. My right hand is in my pocket. I was actually looking for more opiates. <laughs> I was going opiates. for one more. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find uh, my Vicodin. Uh, I fell asleep looking for my Vicodin, Your Honor. Um, so I wasn't participating in the festival of ice cream. <laughs> the festival of <laughs> the ice festival cream. festival of ice cream. I was participating in the festival of Percocet, Your Honor. <laughs> I'd like the record to show. I had 20 Percocet that day. He's like, he doesn't give a shit. No, he doesn't at all. I love all. it. I love this. It's refreshing. He is very honest. At one point in the trial, I've watched a lot of this now. At one point in the trial, the the attorney says, are you at all interested in getting to the bo- like getting to the <laughs> truth, right? And he says, he goes, I am only interested in the truth. I have a love affair with the truth. <laughs> and I got to be honest, it, I think he's he being does. honest. Yeah, I think he's being honest. He doesn't give a shit. He knows that he's a big star yeah. and that no one cares whether or not he's... Now, listen, does he have a problem with drugs? I don't know. I think, you know, you only have a problem with drugs when it's becoming a problem. It sounds like <laughs> Seems he's like just there's having a, problem. a party. He's been sober a couple times, by the way. He's sobered okay. up from alcohol okay. because he does admit that that's an issue, that he can't control the demon, as he puts it, that is him on alcohol and uh he moved to other things yeah he moved to cocaine (laughs) which is (laughs) meth that's such a better well i don't know anybody that becomes a monster on opioids okay Um, i was holding her ice cream and um because she knew what was going to happen that i would fall asleep and it would drop and that was a Oh, sorry, it cut off right there. Yeah, so, it, I mean, Amber... So she was doing it just to kind of, like, see that it was going to happen. He was going to drop the milkshake, and then you, she took a picture. You and I were having a conversation uh, about someone that I dated, and I'm sure that you've had this a similar experience. Sometimes you get in, in relationships with people that, you know, they might call it narcissism, narcissistic disorder, or borderline personality disorder, or whatever it is. If you've been in one of these relationships, then you know... Why is Amber taking these photographs of drugs on the table, you know, Johnny in embarrassing positions? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that Johnny didn't abuse Amber Heard. I guess that they're, they're going to get to the bottom of that. I don't think he's ever been convicted of that, by no. the way, either. Um, and there are pictures of John Johnny with bruises and cuts and scrapes, and his he got his fingertip cut off. That Jeez. he claimed <laughs> was Amber. Did I know. Go too far. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, but that's My what happens God. when two people who yeah. are fucked up just get in the same room mm-hmm. and don't stop getting fucked up. Yep. But I was going to say that gaslighting is a you know so I think it's a like a buzzword these days. Everyone says you know oh I'm being gaslighted, gaslight this and gaslight that. Mm-hmm. There is the just kind of innocent version of gaslighting, which is people don't know how to maturely have a conversation without turning it into uh, you, you know, it's your fault, not my fault. Right. But then there's like the very serious kind of gaslighting, which is premeditated planned attempts to make you look bad so that I don't look like Mm -hmm. an abuser. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a whole manipulative tactic. And it feels to me after watching a lot of this that at least and again, I don't know if Johnny probably was abusive also. I, I'm sure he was. But it seems to me that Johnny also suffered some of this in it the relationship. It was a two-way thing. Yeah, like, and he, she was taking all kind of pictures mm-hmm. of – she was recording him all the time. She was doing video He was videotapes. recording her. She was recording she was her. Recording she was recording him. him. Yeah, that was – She shit on his unhel- bed. Uh, what? She, she shit on his bed. bed. What? She shit on his bed. No. No. No one shits on your bed. No. You don't let someone shit on your bed. No. That's fucking disgusting. Yeah. That is only done. On quaaludes, cocaine, or methamphetamines. How would you think it would ever be okay to shit on... And, and she shit on his side of the bed near his pillow. Oh, my God. Like, I mean, this is just... That's just insanity. This is an awful relationship. And, unless my they're God. into pee-pee poo-poo. Yeah. You want to hear about the finger? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. You dipped your finger in paint after suffering an injury. Suffering an injury? He cut it off. He cut off the top of his finger. She cut off the top of his she finger. She cut off his finger? According to him. Okay. According to him. 
right? Now, he then he went around telling everybody that he did it. So I think there's a little gray space right there. Okay. Like he, I think he, either he was trying to deflect blame so that no right, one knew that his wife cut off his finger or, or yeah. he cut it off himself. Okay. So. <laughs> yes. Yes that, or no? Yes, that was after I had, um, after writing on the walls, the uh, blood had kind of <laughs> what? dried, as it were, and or, and so I uh, stuck my finger into a. Oh, camp. ran out of blood. Yeah. Let me get some pain. Ah, this fucking thing stop bleeding again. <laughs> Amber, bring the knife. Yes. <laughs> he was writing messages to her. Like she what? was going to film a movie, and he was like, you know, be careful at the top. You uh, mean, oh, like, God. be careful when you're famous? <laughs> yeah. And so I think he says it here. Hold on. Let's listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mineral spirits to. Um, to Mineral spirits. Put my verbal messages onto the wall. You'd agree with me that there was quite a bit of damage to the house in Australia after this incident, <laughs> correct? It sounds like it. Um, there was, there was quite a bit of damage to the house uh, during the um, the entire incident. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't remember the television breaking, do you? I remember there was a, I believe there was a coffee cup stuck into the screen or a plate or something like that. <laughs> coffee <laughs> cup or a plate stuck into the screen. Oh my God. I just God. want one day with these yeah, people. No. I just want, I want, like I said, I want protective gear. I want a hazmat suit and I just want to go in there and I just have fun. You know, Things I want Marilyn there. Off the I want rails. Amber there. I want Johnny there with the whole crew. I want the regular lineup. <laughs> I just want to be yeah. in the room. This sounds... <laughs> it sounds crazy. This same guy that I went to the Further Fest with, right? <laughs> the Did one I, that fell asleep? The one that fell asleep. And fast forward a year and a half, some change later, he was dating this girl who was younger than he was, a beautiful girl, uh, like a almost like a porcelain doll. And she had yeah. a real weird, I would say weird, but interesting personality. Mm -hmm. She had an interesting affectation. She looked like a porcelain doll. She acted like a porcelain doll, if that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> but apparently when they got behind closed doors, she was really quite a different person, right? When she was with me or outside, she was just very quiet, demure, didn't say a lot, right? She literally yeah. was kind of a little bit strange, like B like Bjork. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like a really super yeah. hot Bjork, right? And so, uh, so we're in Miami in this little boutique hotel, and I was spending the night in the room across from them. And the next morning, yeah, I got up. It's like this boutique hotel where you walk in the front door of the hotel, and there is a bar that you check into. You know what I'm talking yes, about? The yes. one on Collins Avenue. The ones on Collins Avenue. Mm -hmm. They're all very similar. They don't really have a check-in stand. They're funky. Yeah, they're funky. Yeah. Had, they had this big screen TV at the time that you, not a lot of people had big screen TVs on the wall, flat screen TV on the wall, bar, yeah. you checked in, then you walked up a set of stairs and there was a hallway with a number of rooms, right? Mm -hmm. Lovely place. Wonderful. So we got two of these rooms. And then outside of each of these rooms, you know, all those places down there, they're very clustered, but they have these yeah. alleyways on the side of them that usually turn into gardens. They're like, you know, a garden that you can go sit in, or maybe they even have a pool, but this one didn't. It's just like a little garden with trees and flowers and okay. go sit. Okay. Yeah. So I spend the night, you know, gallivanting around South Beach. <laughs> I come in super late at like three or four in the morning. Uh, the person that I was with uh, was watching like Judge Judy when I walked in the door <laughs> or whatever. Getting wild in Miami. Naked. She was watching Judge oh. Judy naked. Okay. <laughs> so we made out for a while and then I went to sleep. So next morning I go downstairs. I knock on their door. I don't hear anything. Yeah. I go downstairs and she, the girlfriend, is sitting outside and she looks upset. And I said, oh, hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, what's going on? Where is Eduardo? Where mm -hmm. did he go? And she said, well, he's not here. He had to check into a different hotel room. Oh. And I said, oh, gosh, what happened? And she said, well, I don't want to get into all the details, but we got into an argument and he threw the TV out the window. <laughs> he threw the TV out the window. He did that? I thought that had to be a joke, right? right? And this girl's a little strange. So I was like, uh, okay. So the other girl was with me is like, this can't be true. Like, you know, he yeah. didn't do that. And so, so I go to the front desk and I'm like, hey, do you, did this guy check out last night? Or, you know, was there some kind of incident there? Yeah. 
Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. There was. Someone complained that they were outside smoking a cigarette and a wind and a television came flying by their head. Oh, and my I was God. Like, a television came flying by their head. Yes, sir. It's almost a, it's almost a mass murder. You know, it was like, she had it's like pushed some Cuban Eduardo. Gun. She brink. pushed in water to the brink. <laughs> he threw the fucking television out of the window. And this was a time when they did not no. have the flat screen TVs were not six pounds. They were like, you know, 40 pound yes. TVs. And some guy was out there <laughs> smoking cigarettes. And out comes a TV. It just sat on the second floor. Oh, my God. It was wild. Not wild like this, but, you know, kind yeah. of wild anyway. It's You, you could have um, also defaced a painting by drawing a penis on it, didn't you? <laughs> I've never, I, I don't know about that. I don't remember drawing it's, a penis on a painting. Given the state you were in, it's entirely possible that you did that, even if you don't remember it to this day, correct? Drawing a penis on a painting was not the first thing on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> However, I may have done it. Oh, yeah, there's a big possibility. <laughs> the first thing on my mind is where we're going to get blow in Boston. And the second thing on my mind is where's that painting with the penis on it? <laughs> Should have a penis. Let's yeah, I had me messages to uh, write reminders. Y you testified that he had reminders that he had to write with his bloody <laughs> finger. Oh this God. guy is wild. Totally, I'm telling Jeez. you. Get me a date with this guy. I'm so interested in this. This is just insane to it me. It really insane. is. You wrote on the mirror, and I, I don't, I don't remember exactly what you said, but you essentially said that you wrote. Uh, things about your past with Miss Heard or, or grievances Reminders. that you had with her, correct? Reminders, yes. Reminders, get a fucking post-it uh, note, dude. <laughs> there's the notes, I, there's the notes app in your phone. Yeah. It works great. <laughs> Have a great day at work, honey. I wrote that with my eyeball <laughs> that I took out of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, girl, it's me. I just wanted to call let you know I cut off my toe. <laughs> I wrote you a love note left at your parents' house. It's on the front door. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, girl. What's up? It's me. Uh, I took one of our parishioners. <laughs> I cut off their arm. <laughs> and I, I brought it to the house and wrote it. <laughs> I left you their arm just to remind you to call me. I left it with a phone in it to remind you to call me. <laughs> I put a burner phone in the arms. So you call me when you get a chance. Thanks, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, girl. <laughs> Charlie Depp. All right, one more about drugs. Okay. You've seen this picture before, Mr. Depp, right? Uh, yes, I have. Yes. Um, and this is a picture that was taken in uh, Miss Hurd's um, former house or apartment on Orange Avenue after you two began dating, correct? Yes, sir, and it's, a, it's quite a composition. It, the composition of the photograph is very interesting. <laughs> I, I, I think that's something we can agree on. Um, <laughs> this oh is attorney so what is, the, yeah. what is the picture? <laughs> the picture is a table, a glass table, that has a bottle of whiskey, a glass of whiskey, a professional Coke snorting glass straw, the kind that you have to go and purchase. Wow. Yeah. Just for those of you that have never done this particular drug, that's usually not how the drug is ingested. Yeah. Someone has an extra dollar bill on them, right. possibly a McDonald's <laughs> straw. Like there's not, not that much thought put into it, but I don't know. You know, I've, yeah. I haven't done this in many, many years. I don't know. Things maybe the progressed. kids today, yeah, maybe the kids today have their own personal, you know, yeah. with COVID and everything, you yeah. got to take precautions. Yeah. So it's a glass straw okay. and then there are many lines of what seems to be cocaine cut out on the table and there's also a box sitting on the table a, a like a pewter box and the box says jd's special box right <laughs> okay so johnny, it's a, depp. johnny depp or jd's magic box or something like that <laughs> but it's pewter and it's probably about three inches by three inches in uh, a square, yeah. but it's about three inches deep, too. So it'd be like a box that you would open, almost like a trinket box or something. Right. Now, listen. Your Honor, move for admission of Exhibit 1085 and ask for permission. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 1085, published in evidence. Uh, I object, This picture, um, you recall, Mr. Depp, was taken mm -hmm. in, in or around March of 20. I object, Your Honor. I would never snort cocaine like that. I only <laughs> snort yellow cocaine. <laughs> 
It's not my cocaine. I don't snort sneak cocaine, street cocaine, Your Honor. I buy it straight in Colombia. Or my doctor. Can you imagine the kind of connections that Johnny Depp oh, must have? All over the world. They're all over the yeah. world. Like anybody yeah. becomes like, yeah. you know, he just walks into a room, points at his nose, and people yeah. like cocaine <laughs> exactly. just falls into his here. hand. Yeah, here. I think I heard, remember Artie Lang? <clears throat> I mean, he's not dead, but Artie Lang was, um, he, he was... Howard Stern's sidekick oh, for a while. Okay. Him and, okay. you know, he came in when Fred left. But he had this very famous um, kind of falling down scenario where he got addicted to heroin while he was oh, on. God. But it was because he was, a lot of people would just hand him drugs after the show. They loved him so much yeah, that after he happens. would get on stage in a, in a comedy show and he would get off, he, people would just hand him stuff yeah. left and right and left and right. And one time some guy just handed him a bag of heroin and he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to shoot myself with heroin. He's like, you don't have to, you snort it. Right. And it was a whole God. spiral down then. And he, he tried to attempt suicide like Jeez. while he was on the show by sticking a knife in his stomach. Can you imagine? What? I know it's fucking crazy. Oh but God. like famous people, they don't play by the same rules. No, they don't. I'm sure musicians get it too. Obviously, um, Johnny, yeah. Anybody who's a star, cocaine is still used as a pharmaceutical mm-hmm. to this day. They have liquid cocaine. You know, when you get, I think, I think, <laughs> I think. Let me say this, but I believe that when you get Novocaine, it is it has similar principles. Novocaine okay. does why it can cause your heart to race and your mouth to numb, mm-hmm. right? And so these some of these people they just call their doctor and their doctor gives them whatever legal version of whatever it is they want. Yeah. They or you just the know rules. the cartel yeah. somewhere, yeah, that's wherever. True. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, Johnny pick Depp, your place. Yeah. Johnny Depp <laughs> does not get his blow from the dishwasher at your local restaurant. No. That's for sure. <laughs> he doesn't pay $30 for no. a half a gram. That guy... <laughs> I'm probably yeah. dating myself He's so buying much. In bulk. I'm probably <laughs> dating myself so much the kids are like thirty dollars for half a gram. That's cheap. We're just, <laughs> was Brian getting thirty dollars for half a gram. <laughs> hey girl, just wanted to let you know that cocaine due to inflation is hundred twenty dollars <laughs> for a gram. You want the good stuff, call me. <laughs> I've parted with Johnny. Johnny's been to my church before. After you'd fallen off the wagon, right? That's oh. one way to fall off the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> A bottle of whiskey and 17 lines of cocaine. Yeah. I'm sure what date? March of 2013, I believe, March right? March 2013. Does that ring a bell? Um, well. <laughs> well uh, <laughs> no, Your Honor, it yeah, doesn't. Yeah. Did Was you that see a that? day that I did drugs, Your Honor? <laughs> I'd like to ask the question. <laughs> Yeah. I've got on my drug calendar here that I did not do cocaine on a day, Your Honor. That was an ecstasy day. I don't like to mix the two around. You know, yeah. Leg yeah. day, arm day. Leg like day, at the, arm day, at the gym. blow day, X day. <laughs> <laughs> Shroom day, weed day. You know how it is. You can't mix your two, Your Honor. It gets, becomes a problem when you're trying to. You know, uh, when you're trying to act in the world's best movie, when you're trying to get another best picture or Academy <laughs> Award, you're on, you can't mix your drug days. That's not a cocaine day, I remember. If March 23rd, um, I- he, as if he would remember. Yeah. <laughs> as if he would remember. I mean, I don't remember March 23rd, 2015. Yeah. Four, 13? I, I don't remember t- March 23rd, 2022. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, and that was like 16 days ago. Yeah. I had uh, fallen off the wagon from when we were when I was doing Lone Ranger when Mr. <laughs> was, was with me when I was uh, sober. Okay. Um, but that was those the whiskey um, that's on the table was that was an average. <laughs> Every day I would come home to her place and there would be a glass of whiskey waiting for me and and you would sometimes drink whiskey in the mornings too right during this time period um i i i, I you know i mean isn't happy hour anytime <laughs> <laughs> well yes johnny well, that's is. gonna be a drop on our show that's classic <laughs> that's classic johnny Depp right there i mean the guy is just yeah for him, it is. He could just fly to a different time zone, yeah. too. And, like, wherever. Wherever. I mean. Yeah. What time? What time do you need it to be? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to point out that in my <laughs> script, uh, it says it's dark outside yeah. when I'm filming. Right. I'm a little confused about the time, Your Honor. I had to get in the mood. I had to be on the set early in the morning, but I was filming a night scene. That's why I was doing copious amounts of cocaine and drinking, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd like to point out that, uh, can I have a moment to take some shrooms? <laughs> do you mind, Your Honor? 
<laughs> Can the court recess briefly <laughs> while I do another bump? I'm starting to lose my high. It's becoming agitating. <laughs> Yeah. Your Honor, am I allowed to smoke c- No, not allowed to smoke cigarettes. And what about crystal meth? Would that be okay, Your Honor? Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Would Your Honor like a Xanax? Right. Is this attorney Can boring? Can I give that lawyer yeah. one of my pills yeah. that make yeah. people stop talking? Is this attorney boring you like he's boring me? Your Honor, uh, permission to approach the attorney with some Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's a bucket of monkeys, oh, yeah. dude. I love it. I, I, It's very fascinating. You know, part of what made me feel so, um, I don't know. So now I say connected because I was never felt connected to Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> he just lived a different life than any of us will ever live. Right. Right. And while I had my fun times, I certainly wasn't living a lifestyle <laughs> like Johnny Depp. No way. Uh, but part of what made me feel um, excited about Hunter S. Thompson was at that time back in the 90s when mm-hmm. I was growing up to talk about these things so out in the open to give these experiences uh, words and verbalize right. how you felt and what you did and the things that were going on in your brain. Johnny Depp is showing the exact same kind of gonzo journalism right on the stand. Now, I want to say that ab- abuse, emotional abuse and physical abuse is ah, a course. very serious thing, as is drug addiction and alcoholism. Mm-hmm. I'm not poking fun at those, but this is a fucking comedy show. So, I mean, come on, guys, <laughs> I'm just having a little bit of fun with it. I, I'm always apologizing before I do anything because I'm so afraid that, you know, not afraid, but I can already hear the commenters like, you know, alcoholism is a very, se- I know it's a very serious issue if you're a regular person, but if yes. you're Johnny Depp, you just drink. That's what you do. Johnny Depp is a bucket of monkeys. Yeah. He's we, letting it all out on the stand. You think we can? Think we can? There's a possibility of getting him on the show. <laughs> if we Just have enough like drugs, zoom in. <laughs> I, I don't have any drugs. I don't either. But I'm. I could pay for the drugs. Yeah. Like I could say, here, let me sell you fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars will get me through nine thirty a.m. <laughs> but I'll need a re up at ten. <laughs> <laughs> hey Johnny, it's me from the TC. It's me, uh, executive coordinator of TCB. I'm just calling to find out how much money I need to sell you for tomorrow's interview for the drugs. <laughs> uh, Seven thousand dollars will get me through the first part of the interview. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I know. On this, wow. A, yeah, he pays for the best. Yeah. Johnny probably only goes premium gold on everything oh, of too. Course. Yeah. He's probably buying pharmaceuticals straight from the pharmaceutical company. Probably. Yeah, he probably yeah. calls him up. <laughs> Good afternoon, AstraZeneca. Yes, uh, me, Johnny Depp. Uh, I'm trying to get a hold of some fentanyl lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Depp, one moment. Could you put me in touch with my sales rep, please? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what's going on. Oh, it's yeah. so corrupt. But, you know, to each their own. Anyway, yeah. Johnny Depp is on uh, Johnny Depp's on trial. Yes. And it's a whole... I'm excited to see what unfolds. It's a whole shit show. You should... Uh, <laughs> You should tune in sometimes. <laughs> is it just on the internet or is it on like... On the internet. It's on cbsnews.com okay. and MSNBC. I think even Fox is carrying it, but they're not carrying it on the regular. You have to go to like the website or to yes. you know, CNBC2 or whatever. Yes. Okay. But there's a lot of people that are interested in this. And the one video that I was taking, cutting up clips from had yeah. two and a half million views and it just was published on Friday. Two and wow. a half million views. Everybody else is excited to watch Every too. other podcaster's doing the same thing. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry if you turned us on to get a break from Johnny Depp, and here we are. But that's how it goes. Uh, gotta, hey, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Right here in the TCB studio. We're right here. All the time. We're right here. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> uh, no, Your Honor, I wasn't trying to get more ecstasy. I was just trying to get some get, ecstasy. Yeah, not more. <laughs> not more. I just wanted I was some. Out. Yeah. What is more, Your Honor? <laughs> if I'm out, then I'm not just getting right. some. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married to the truth, Your Honor. <laughs> TCBpodcast.com, that's where you go. You can find out more about Chrissy and I. Read all about us. Listen to all the audio, watch all the video. Exciting news. You can now get Chrissy and I on video oh, on Spotify. That's right. You can watch all the full episodes on Spotify, and I'm going to start putting clips up there too. But it's a different channel than the audio channel. That's just the way Spotify is working it for right now. So go search for TCB Live, or we'll put a link on the website and in the show notes. TCB Live, The Commercial Break Live is how you have to search it. And when you search The Commercial Break Live, you'll see the same commercial break logo but with a big blue live under it that's it if you click play 
you can see the video version on your Spotify nice. app while you're driving. <laughs> no, <laughs> when you're drugging, when, when you're, you're drugging, yeah, when you're drugging, yep. when you're being your own little John, <laughs> when you're on your own little Johnny Depp world, you can watch the commercial break live. We're building out the back catalog, so there's just a few of the most recent episodes, but I'm building out the back catalog as we go along. Again, I'll start to put clips up there on a daily basis, as well as YouTube.com slash The Commercial Break. Still the only place you can find every single piece of video that The Commercial Break has ever done on YouTube.com slash The Commercial Break. Please subscribe and like, if you would, your favorite video at The Commercial Break in 661-237-8296-661. Best to yo. Text us questions, comments, concerns, and if you want to be on the show, let us know. Chrissy, that's all I can do for today. That's right. I love you. I love you. Best to you. Best to you, Brian. And until next time, we always say we do say we must say bye. bye. The commercial break. New YouTube clips drop daily at youtube.com slash the commercial break. Visit tcbpodcast.com for access to our entire media library. Follow us at the commercial break on Instagram. Each episode is written and produced by Brian Green, co-hosted by Chrissy Hoadley, with additional content provided by Tina Connell.